What is going on Adventure Nation? In this episode, we've got about five or six minutes of finishing up our Baja Mexico trip. And then after we've got a little Q and A for those of you who have some questions yep. and stuff about Mexico. So stick around. This is the Motorhome Experiment. We are all hooked up and leaving King's Coronita. Is that what this is called? Yes. I, we didn't record anything in this campground. I, I don't see a reason for staying here really, unless it's maybe a quick overnight. It is full hookups, so it might be okay for a smaller rig, yeah. a big rig. I, I, I will stay here if we could again. And I'm saying if we could, because it's like the space are so tight, it's more fitted for smaller rigs this campground but it's just so close to downtown. It's a nice area, so you feel safe, and it's like, you get access to Ensenada, and that's what you want. Ensenada is not too much about pretty tongue, many things to do. From here, you do your day trip, so, like, we have mixed feelings, I guess, about it. Yeah, well, a 40-footer came in yesterday pulling a trailer, and he wound up parking the trailer in the spot, and his rig was out in the middle of the thing. You have to grab yeah, the- Yeah, I would say this You have is to grab the control out of the car. I would say it's from smaller rigs. Kind yeah. Of. We barely fit it. But we're rolling out. So, I'm just today we cross the border. Instead of heading straight up the coast to Tijuana, we decided to cut northeast across through Baja California's beautiful wine country. Although the weather didn't play really nice until we were leaving, of course. North of wine country is the border town of Tecate, known for Tecate beer. That's the factory there. We decided to take a quick drive through downtown Tecate because GPS told us so and we soon realized that it had done us wrong and one turn up a one-way street and we were stuck for 45 minutes. We are here in Tecate and uh, this is one of the reasons I love GPS. In all honesty, it's not RV GPS, it's regular GPS. It is regular GPS, but still, it doesn't know that you're driving something this big it, instead of something really tiny. Yes. So, we're waiting for the school to get out so that all these cars go away and we can get turned around. Actually, we're not going to turn around, we're going to back up three blocks because this is a one-way street. In the narrow street. Fun stuff. Easy. Yeah. We just need to go right there. I could just make a run for it, I guess. All right, we got turned around and, uh, you know, it is what it is. Now we're getting a police escort to the border. He's gonna show us how to get there so that uh, we don't have any more issues. So that's kind of cool. He just happened to be cruising by, saw that we were rehooking up and stuff, and uh, he stopped the traffic, stopped for, traffic for a little bit yeah. so we could get turned around, and now uh, he's gonna show us uh, how to get to the border. So nice. Again, not all these not all these guys down here are, are bad guys, you know? So, just like anywhere else, just like anywhere else in the world, so. Some are good, some are bad. Gracias, Jesus. Gracias, Jesus. <laughs> All right, inspection is over. We passed with flying colors except for three apples. They, they got three it. apples to contribute to their lunch which is fine, but uh, just a few questions and we're on our way. Thank you, officer. And that's it. They asked us where we were, where we, we were coming from, where we we're going, and that's it. They really looked in the fridge. That, that was the only thing that they did, so that uh, was not too bad at all. The secondary inspection was maybe 
five minutes, okay. ma maybe ten so tops. Literally, he just came to check the fridge, so was it. Yeah. Um, he was going to take our choy riso, and then he realized it was soy riso. So, it's soy. No, it's soy. Meat, so, we got to keep it. Yeah. Now, we're only half an hour or so, I think, to Pio Pico, and that will be our home for a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're doing a left right here. Oh, and by the way, welcome back to the USA, Lorena. Woohoo! Woo Three months, more exactly, 93 days. So, Was it 93 back. days? Yes. Was it really? Yes. Wow. Back so to back to having to make full stops and stop signs, red lights, having to signal, having to stay in our lane. I don't know if I'll, how long it'll take me to get used to that. Turning into Pio Pico. We have crossed back into the U.S. Our Baja Mexico series is over, Lorena. It's done. Done. We love it, we enjoy it, but it feels nice to be back as well. Yeah, we hope so. you guys enjoyed the Baja Mexico series as well. And if you didn't, I don't know what to tell you, but we're back in the U.S. and from here on in, we'll be back in the U.S. Now to new adventures here in Off the Off to new adventures. Baja, you were good to Thank us. You. Thank you. Now time to check in. We're back, we're back. Lori, we're back in the U.S. In the U.S.A. What a phenomenal trip. It was. It was very, like, unexpectedly cool because we were just going in and out. I guess it's kind of like Alaska. You have an idea of what it's supposed to be, and then you go in and it's like, oh, my God, it's cooler than I thought. There's yeah, it, it blew my mind. A lot cool more things to do than I thought. Yeah, yeah, I really, really enjoyed that. So we figured what we would do is do a and a right. little five I'm minutes. Notes here. Yeah, a little five minutes you just saw. <laughs> I should have put it on the last video, and we could have been done. But Lori had a great idea that after this, we arrived at Pio Pico there. Why not do a Q&A? &A? And I think it's... Uh, an amazing idea. And so we're gonna go through some of the questions that we had, the major yeah. questions, and More try like to answer those. The questions that we got while the videos happened, while the trip happened, and your major concerns. I know it's, that's, this trip is not for everybody. I understand that not everybody wants to do it, but right. I know a few of you Yeah, you guys are... made that perfectly clear. <laughs> I feel you are interested. I feel you want to actually do right. it. So I guess these questions are more towards you, like to answer those questions. Right. If you're the I'll never go to Mexico person, don't watch. Stop yeah. watching this. Go do something else. Don't don't waste your time. Yeah, I, I, it's okay. It's all right. I, I, I don't get offended. No. At the end of the day, it's like, yeah. if you don't want to go, I'm not going to make yeah. you Yeah, the biggest question. And by the way, this Q&A, we're going to have some noise going on in the background. There's some people screaming over there, camping. They're having a good time. There might be a little bit of road noise, but we'll get through it. Number one question that we got asked all the time every single video before we went after we've got back is safety is it safe to go down there is it Do safe you feel safe while you're down there is it safe to go out i mean so many safe the safe safe, safe safe yeah and to me there's like what what's safe to you and uh everybody has a different like you guys drive us crazy with the whole you gotta wear a life vest in the kayak in a lake in a lake yeah. or when we're a hundred yards from shore we don't feel unsafe in that kayak it can spring a leak it can go down to the bottom of the ocean we will swim back to shore we don't feel unsafe but if you feel unsafe wear a life vest everybody, everybody has their different, different idea of safety everybody has different concerns Yes. For some people are talking about safety about the roads. Some people are talking about <clears throat> safety about boondocking. Some people are talking just safety of just going down there, period. So it's like, and I think because of what's happening in the media, re people really have like very like big concerns because of what they see. But our experience, and we're talking about our experience while we were down there, mm -hmm. is that a lot of those things that we hear in the news you don't see it all down there. Right. The news is inherently negative. That's what news is. They report the abnormal, and so they explode it. I will say there are issues down there. There, There is cartel violence. We're not saying that those things don't happen. No, it totally happens. We're saying that mm -hmm. if you're aware of your surroundings, you ask the locals, where should we go? Where should we not go? At Los Barillas, they said, 
don't go hang out on the strip clubs out at the out at the highway. No, they say any bars or any yeah, they, out of the highway after a certain time. They say yeah. if it's past eight, don't go into that area. Yeah, especially as a gringo. They said don't don't do it. And we were like, okay, perfect. We stayed away from those areas. Those areas are in almost every city in the United States, in Canada, anywhere in the world. You go to a major city and there's gonna be that don't go there. We were told don't go to New Orleans, violent place. We had a blast. Memphis, same thing. We had a blast. Every area has got its statistics on how bad it is. Be aware of your surroundings. Don't go into the places that the locals tell you to stay away from. And the same things in Mexico, the same things in anywhere else. Now, if you're down there and you're looking to go buy drugs and you go into the wrong area, you're going to have an issue. I prefer to buy my heroin from a reputable dealer so that I don't get into that. I don't buy heroin anymore. I've never bought heroin. Okay, safety is one of those things, guys, that it's just, again, what is what is safe to you? We had somebody say they weren't going to risk their family's life. That's a little bit of a stretch for me. I, I, I just feel it's a stretch. We met this family in the schoolie, the Johnson family. They've gone down there every year for the past six or seven years. And not just Baja. We're talking right into the heart of Mexico. We saw, and they have a great time. We saw so many families on there. People traveling in their V's, in their A streams, in their vans, tenting. I mean, it's like we met so many families on there. So... It's not like right. you cannot do it. It's like, again, it's like don't expose yourself. Just right. travel in the daytime. Don't travel at night. It's like, go if you feel comfortable, we did boondocking. But if you're comfortable, <clears throat> just go from campground to campground. There is behind gates. That's Most it. unsafe thing to me were the roads because they were so narrow. So narrow, yeah. But that, that was the unsafe part to me. It was just the driving aspect of it because of the, the road being narrow and... and just so many cows and animals on the roads. The even rest of it was Paul, a breeze. Even Paul, when I asked him if he would go back to Mexico like and do what we did, and he's like, I would love to go back. I love the places. I love the food. I love the people. I just don't know if I can drive those roads again. Yeah, so they that are was his, brutal. Like, that was his butt. He's like, yeah. not sure if he can do that. But that, that's, you know, that's really where we need to kill it about safety. We could go on and on and on. If you only watch the news, you are never going to leave your house. You're just not. Because I'm sure in your city, wherever you live, there's also crime happening, regardless of what kind of crime it is. Don't put yourself in a bad situation. Get out and explore, and you're going to have a great time. Yes. No matter where so, you go. So, different questions that we got, and I think this is another big one. What about the water? Is the water safe to drink in Mexico, yes. Laurie? Uh, Do you no. guys drink the water? No, we don't drink the water. No. Even as Mexicans, like you will find on any single store, even the tiny stores, the bigger stores, every store will have five gallon the uh, big five jugs gallon. of water. Yeah, so because everybody, and you can buy like a little pump, they sell them everywhere too, mm -hmm. where you can uh, have put the pump in the five gallon, just pump water out to your glasses, to your pot, whatever it is that you're doing. Right. So if it's for drinking or consumption, like cooking with it, it's like we use that that water. If it's for brushing our teeth, washing our hands, washing our doing our laundry or all that, we use regular water, just yeah. like tap water. Did we buy a single five gallon jug? No. In we Mexico, we did not. So we treated the water in Mexico the exact same way that we treat the water everywhere else we've been in the United States and in Canada. We first run it through one of these filters. This one's the Camco filter. You buy them in pairs at uh, at Walmart, Walmart, or you can Apple, buy them online. online. Yeah. yeah, I'll put some links below the video so that if you guys buy them on Amazon, we'll get a little something, something. Buy them in pairs. By themselves, they're like 20 bucks or 18 bucks a piece, and then you buy two of them and they're 25, something like that. So instead of being 36 bucks for two, they're $25, so buy them in, in twos. You can also get the bigger ones, the one that like Kevin uses, a big one that's got reusable paper filters in it. That's, uh, you can do that as well. This is what gets rid of some of the taste, some of the smell in, in the water and things like that. Then once that is in our RV, we use this to fill our, our, uh, tank. our tank, our freshwater tank, or just when we're running water through. Then any water that we're, we use that for showering, for, for washing our hands, for brushing our teeth, for all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then for our drinking water, we use the Berkey, which has been just absolutely Valuable. incredible for us. When we actually bought the Berkey, it was like a big upfront cost. So we were not very sure about buying it. But uh, we actually now made the numbers and we uh, came up with actually it was at three cents a gallon. Somewhere around in there. About yeah. that average. Three of, to five cents a gallon, let's say. Yes. So when you actually put it that way, it's like, oh my God, it actually makes sense to buy it. And the fact that we don't have to go to a store and refill anything or buy anything, we are not into uh, having a lot of plastic in the house. So for us, we're 
I mean, super good. Yeah, we literally just, we have one yeah. of the, the pull-out spouts from our the kitchen, kitchen faucet. faucet. We just turn on the water, fill up the Berkey. It gravity fills into the bottom completely free of 99.9% .9 of the contaminants. You'd have to, you can go online and look at all that stuff. And it has two type of filters. One is like the, the black filter, and then they have the white filters that is for our scenics and fluoride and other stuff like that, like yeah. heavy chemicals. So we also got those ones. So yeah. ours has a double filtration system and for us it has been amazing not having to worry about water. Like from Ever. the tank yeah. goes to the Berkey and then to our glass. And we have drinking water. And yes. so that's that's how we handled our water down there. That's how we handle our water everywhere. Exactly. Pretty easy peasy. So we didn't even like clean the tanks or anything after Mexico. We didn't feel it was need to. It was no. like same kind of water yep. for us. Yep, so. absolutely. Next question. The next question will be, Camping. let's talk about cost hookups and big rigs. Full hookups, and by full hookups, I mean they're not really full hookups. You're going to get water that's going to be ridiculously horrible pressure, no pressure. most likely. <laughs> you're going to get a sewer hookup, which is fine. It's a sewer hookup. And you're going to get electric. Electric in most places are going to be 15 amps. You're not going to be able to fire up everything in your RV. There were a few parks that had 30 amp, and I think... Even one Maranatha might have had 50 amp. Maranatha I'm not sure. Day, but again, you're probably going to be there in the winter when running an air conditioner is not necessary. If you get into that area where you're going to need your AC on, it's probably going to be one because you're going to be most likely in 30 amp service, but as little as 15 amp service. But the majority, when, I, when they say full hookup, just expect yeah, no. it to be 15 amp. And if there's 30 or 50 there, Hey, that's, that's a bonus. Mm -hmm. Full hookup down there, I would say on average, is gonna be 25 bucks. If you get right next to the ocean, it might get up to be 40 bucks, maybe yes. 50 I tops. mean, we went to a few places, even right next to the water, <clears throat> that it was $15 a night. Yeah, no hookups right camping, mm -hmm. but it was a campground. And we went to other places like Playa Norte and Los Barriles that it was uh, $45 to be like on the front spot. And so, that was full hookup. And that was full hookup. And so, then we paid as little. <laughs> The one yeah. place we paid six bucks. For yeah, the, for the night. Yeah, that was right camping, but it was just like amazing spot. But my point is, like, it goes all across right. the board, like depending like what kind of camping you're doing. But uh, on average, they will charge I will say twenty five dollars. Yeah. In Sanada, it was thirty five. Uh, once you go in the south, it's cheaper. So it depends where you are. Average is twenty five. Forty percent of the camping we did was boondocking. Forty percent. And okay. the only reason that happened is because. Um, Where's where we stayed too long? We we're like, we really didn't need to stay here, but we're staying here. Playa Norte? Yeah, because it was cool. Actually, there we could yeah. have gone to the Royal. We There's could have went to the Royal and, and done that. Yeah. But, uh, we but were we hanging out with ground. folks. Yeah, but um, it was 40% that we did the boondocking, yeah. so that put our expenses down a little bit. And somebody, I apologize, I don't remember who asked, well, what, where do you dump when you're boondocking? Well, you saw that when we're done boondocking, we go check in at a campground, spend a couple of days there, dump the tanks, and, and then get back go. out. And about big rigs, uh, most of the places are not big rig friendly. Like everything in Mexico, uh, I guess like they used to in the old days when these campgrounds were built. Most uh, of them were travel trailers. Yeah, they were travel trailers and they were small travel trailers. So that's what they cater to. But now everybody has class A's or big fit wheels and stuff like that. So you can fit in some places, but you have to be very like, you have to have some skills sometimes. In some of the it. places, yeah. There's a place like Playa Norte, fine, it's wide open. But in San Felipe, but you guys San Felipe, butter probably you squeeze in. Yeah, and a few other of the places on the way down, Guerrero Negro, uh, that those types of places. There's going to there's gonna be some areas that you're just not going to be able to fit, but that doesn't mean that you can't make it work. If you've got mm -hmm. a 40-foot rig, we had a couple of friends down there in 40-foot rigs, and, and they made it work. But you're gonna have to research that you're gonna have to to look ahead to see where you're gonna stay there are no campgrounds down near cabo san lucas and san jose del cabo they're just there just aren't the closest mm -hmm. you're gonna get is gonna be playa norte and there's one other there in los grillas uh, there's but... like a, also glorieta la glorieta rv campground in, in cabo but there's like literally sites counted with a handful there's yeah like handful. and the chance of you getting in there during and the they winters do monthly. they don't really do like daily so right so right so re research that stuff but if you're you're going to try to explore cabo you're going to wind up staying in los Barillas. You could also do that little campground in up Todo in Santos. Todo Santos. No, Todo Santos, you can't. There's just there's no way a bigger rig will get in there. 
Uh, the other one is uh, El Pescadero. There was the Baja Serena there. Yeah, well, that's you what I You could fit in there. Sorry. And even for big rigs, Baja if you Serena don't have is... the right side, you might not actually fit. <laughs> you have to have the right side. Baja too. Serena, if you're bigger than 35, you're not going to get in there. We, we barely hard. could make the turn going in, and the lady stands there and watches to make sure you don't rip the back of your rig off on their wall. Uh, it's really, really tight. It's but tight. I would say the entire trip is, is not super big rig friendly. It's just not. The road is narrow as it is, is, is really said, bad. With that being said, we saw some big rigs. We saw some big rigs, but we also saw pictures of a big rig that was with a caravan that had driven off the road and almost went off a cliff. So Three times. Yeah, well, he, he drove off the road two or three times. Three times, so I Craziness. think that was just a bad driver. Yeah. You have to be a skillful driver for sure if you're going to Mexico. What's next? Let's talk about fuel. Fuel's available everywhere. Abil There's no worries about availability. Availability and also diesel, because we we yeah. know some of you guys have diesel trucks pulling your trailers or uh, sprinter yep. vans, or you also might have a diesel pusher. I will um, say that say. there's no way you're going to run out of gas or diesel in Mexico unless you do something really stupid. No, I mean, if you go from Mayor Town to Mayor Town, they all have, yeah. like, you will find, even if it's not Mayor Town, a small town, you fi will find uh, fuel anywhere and everywhere. Yeah. Diesel, I will say 90% uh, of the yeah. gas station will have diesel. There's only yeah. that 10% that doesn't have it. Yeah. Fill um, up in major major towns and cities, and you're gonna be you're gonna be fine. There's yeah. never a stretch like we can go 400 miles in our coach. There's never a stretch that's more than 150, I think, to 200 miles maybe, where there's not gonna be a fuel station. The ultra low sulfur diesel that everybody was worried about. Everything that I can find, every bit of information I can find online. I never checked when I was there because I, I don't look at diesel, but everything that I see online says that ultra low sulfur ultra low sulfur diesel ulsd is available everywhere there they have brand new trucks down there they have brand new you know the buses. farmers have big buses and dodge ram trucks not that the farmers don't have buses but they have big no, dodge ram good. trucks but, they have but like there are big buses, buses down there that are brand like new Volvo Mercedes, big buses. yeah I mean, all of that Mercedes. stuff there's brand new tractor trailers down there there's ulsd available down there everywhere go online check pemex diesel uh do some research just in case, but for the most part, all of that stuff has been available since for what I'm reading around 2017. Our camera keeps shutting off. We don't even know where we're at right now. Where were we? Now the next is about repairs, auto parts, and RV parts. So what happens if your RV breaks, or you happen to hit it somewhere, or something happened in the middle of your trip in Mexico? If you're talking about engine repairs, you're gonna be able to get your diesel and or car, truck, SUV repaired anywhere. I mean, there's, there's places everywhere. There's diesel mechanics down there. Again, it's going to be easier to find a regular gas mechanic than a diesel mechanic, but there are diesel mechanics down there. Parts are going to be somewhat available in certain places, but not in others. But there are major Ford dealers in all the big cities. Uh, there's major auto zones. Auto zones. Like um, all along the road, like yeah. going south, there was auto zones even in Yeah, even towns. in some of the smaller towns. So yeah. auto parts are available some diesel parts are going to be available in bigger cities but we had one of our friends uh blow out his uh, turbo yeah, down there yeah. he wound up having to order parts and i'm sure that was expensive but he wound up getting it getting it fixed if you're looking for just parts just repair parts for your engines and things like that it may be difficult in some spots but you can make that happen if you need an rv part totally you're screwed story. Yeah, they that, just don't that, have them. That's the opposite. It's like RVs, RVs are not the thing in Mexico. The RVs that you see permanent in Mexico is because foreigners took them there and they happened to sell it to somebody in Mexico or something like that. But RVs don't exist in Mexico. They don't manufacture them. They yeah. don't care about them. They don't uh, run parts for them over there. If you need a tent pole, you'll be able to find that. But you're not <laughs> going to find a part. Yeah, no. Our, our friends, the Hamptons, needed just a piece for their valve. One of the, their valve, their the Y valve, valve yeah. broke. They needed a new one, couldn't get it. I bought one here in the US for 30 bucks and it cost us over $200 to get it shipped to them. Two days ship. Two day ship, which didn't happen. It was wound up being 10, 10 days. days. If you need an RV part, you're toast. Like you're gonna have to order it from the US and somehow get it in there. Mm -hmm. it, it, that's gonna be an issue, but for the most part, regular yeah. stuff, regular mechanics, not a problem. Let's talk about cell signal, Wi-Fi connectivity while in Mexico. It is not like it is in the U.S. It's Definitely worse. Definitely not. And we complain about the U.S. because there's still so many places like where we are right now that we're not gonna, you're not gonna know where we are, but we are, there is no connectivity. 
So it's even hard here. But when you go to Mexico, there's not even good Wi-Fi when you go even to a Starbucks. I went to Starbucks in, in Cabo and it was like, it was horrible. You can barely read your email if you could. But uh, I will say uh, cell phone, it was okay in major cities. We, I mean, Cabo and La Paz and Ensenada, I mean, it was rocking in yeah. all those places. But when you go into smaller towns or between towns, it's very poor, very poor to signal. So be prepared for that. Be prepared to stay connected. Like my mom is always watching where I am and I will be like, mom, from here to here, I'm not going to have cell connectivity. So you will hear from me in four to five days. So she knew. If you have to work for a living, you're going to have to go from major city to major city pretty much and not do a lot of the small towning. Yeah, and the, the remote boondocking that we were doing at the beaches, that, that that's you're not doable. Not doable. You're, you no. just don't have cell service for the most part. Because sometimes even you will have cell <clears throat> service and it will drop. Like we were in Honkali, they were going to do the live from there and because we were working and it was great. And the day that uh, we were going to do the live, it was a Friday. No, it was a Saturday. Yeah. So people were arriving to camp and everybody's using the same tower. So it's just like... Yeah, it wasn't you get ten extra people on the tower, and it just <laughs> cut out. Just be aware of that. You're gonna have very slow Wi-Fi when you go to places, but a lot of places offer free Wi-Fi. So you just need to check your email and, or just send a quick message to somebody through Messenger. It's like you can do yep. that. It's just not gonna be your streaming Wi-Fi for sure. Now, what else? Last but not least, specialty items like when we're talking about uh, buying things that you can buy in the US can you get them in Mexico you mean specialty items as far as food as food or yeah things you like to drink or all that stuff yes Mexico like in the bigger cities in Sonata and then you have La Paz and then you have Cabo San Jose they will have Costco they will have Sam's they will have Walmart's that they will like carry most of the stuff that you will find in the US but there is a, those very special items, and I'm going to put this as an example. Us as vegetarians, uh, we use a lot of nutritional yeast. That's something that I found that in one store, specialty store down there, and it was like a tiny little thing for very expensive when actually we use a lot of it. Mm -hmm. So I stocked up before going down to Mexico knowing that I was going to need it, and that was it. So if there is some specialty item, you're gluten-free, you're vegan, you're vegetarian, and you want to carry with you or a drink, specialty drink, just take it with you for the length of your trip. Mm -hmm. Even even the Scott's RV toilet paper that we like to use, oh, not available not down available there down at there. Walmart. We usually buy it at Walmart. I went to the Walmart here recently and there were eight packs, four packs, and just like huge stacks of it here uh, in California, mm -hmm. not in Mexico. Luckily, they we... don't even have the RV section Yeah, in because Walmart. there is no RVs over there, <clears> so right. they don't cater to that. But, uh, but yeah, we almost made it out like with enough of that. My point being if you need some something that you really like a lot in specialty it's like just bring it with you yeah you have to have that certain otherwise, coffee otherwise otherwise you're gonna find that you can find anything in mexico yeah. they still have big stores and grocery stores with a lot of cool items almond milk they have it in any store i mean fruits veggies yep. pastas Yep, and you will find certain little shops and specialty shops that have certain things but there's just don't mm -hmm. expect that if there's that weird item that you normally buy anywhere in the U.S. that you might not be able to get mm -hmm. it down there. But I think that's it. I think those were the major questions that most of you had. I hope like this helped. We could address all of them. Um, I, I'm sure we like touched some hot points, <laughs> mostly in the first one about safety. <laughs> Glad that you hang out until the end. Yeah, that's it. Uh, this wound up being really longer than we wanted it to be. Oh, he just doesn't shut up. Like, he just keeps going like the ever ready bunny <laughs> thanks for watching gang if this is your first time here let's finish it like we normally do yeah. if it's your first time here and you don't know us get to know us hang out with us a little bit and that means they have to subscribe hit that subscribe button it would be equally as cool if you liked the video and we'll see you again in the next one bye guys bye now it smells so good it is too. it is pretty it just smells like bug spray oh you no, she not me. Goes you for were it. putting it on like it was skin so soft or whatever. Yeah. No, it doesn't even, not even like that. <laughs> I don't know.